Hello everybody, it's the City of Matt Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the G-Sorb 1008. This is a tier 8 tank destroyer that was added in the game with the uh, Independence Season Pass. If you guys are able to buy the Ultimate Season Pass, I would recommend it. The tank's not bad. At the same time, it's not good. It's kind of a 50-50. Um, there's a few things I want to cover about the tank, starting off. Uh, it was introduced a little bit weaker... NPC armor wise um, gun handling everything else you know the console has their own way of handling gun handling and their own way of balancing out tanks but a few things to mention 0 0.8 millimeter millimeters of armor does make a big difference um, I don't know why they would lower the armor by 0 0.8 on the sides bringing it from 50.8 to just 50 flat uh, it does make it to where, like, the, a couple of the newer tanks in game, like the ISU-152K and the Dreadnought, are able to overmatch the side of the tank, which I do believe is one of the reasons why they did that, because those are popular sellers, and they don't want to undermine those tanks. They want to make those tanks a little bit more powerful than, really, what they should be. But then again, that's kind of my own personal opinion on how I thought about it. So, other than that, let's go ahead and start jumping into statistics and take a look at the G-Sor overall. Honestly, I hear a lot of mixed conversations about the tank. Some people are saying it's overpowered. Some people are saying that it's not strong enough. Personally, this tank is dead center. Um, some people say that the 11 degrees of gun depression that the tank is getting is overpowered for the tank, saying that 11 degrees is just too much. Well, even with that 11 degrees of gun depression that this tank gets, your armor doesn't change. So even if you're using max gun depression, they can still rip through your turret without a problem. Other than that, let's go ahead, dive into the uh, statistics here, and then play some matches live, because I haven't recorded any for the tank. I kind of don't want to record any matches for the tank. I've invested a little, like maybe 10 or so, 15 or so matches inside the tank as of right now, and I kind of have an idea how the tank is going to be played and what to use it for. It definitely is a ridgeline fighter, though. That is for sure. So starting off, 226 standard pen, 321 premium, 53 millimeters of high explosive, 320 damage across the board between your AP and APCR. Um, AP rounds travel at 1,066 meters per second, and your APCR travel at 1,411 meters per second, and then your high explosive travel at 1,066. So overall, accuracy on this tank is phenomenal 0 0.27 with the crew on it accuracy not entirely shell velocity i'm a muppet shell velocity is uh, absolutely fantastic you load the premium rounds in you're going to be hitting targets across the way without much of a problem thing is is that if you're using them for better penetration longer distance they do have only nine millimeters more of penetration at 500 meters at 220 while your standards get 211 because they are AP. AP lose, don't lose as much penetration over distance. Along with that, 60 top speed, 370 view range, and still concealment of 0.31. So concealment on the GSOR is amazing. Uh, you're able to get it down below 270. Currently, mine is sitting at 231, but I'm not running silent driving on this tank. Even though I should be running silent driving, I'm not. Uh, with a base view range of 370, sacrificing optics is not something I would recommend. Optics is going to be one of the go-tos and must-have for the tanks. Um, along with that, there is no vertical stable, no vertical stabilizer on the tank either. So aim time, once you have your crew put together correctly, aim time is 2.08. So there's no real reason to try and bolster your gun handling any more than what your crew is capable of um, along with that let's go ahead and take a look 4.71 rounds per minute uh, 45 second base reload you are able to get that down to 36 seconds with born leader and rapid loading aim time 2.3 base four shots per clip two second interclip reload so you fire your first shell it's going to take you six seconds to fully enter your exit out your clip 40 round capacity uh, 0.34 accuracy, 11 degrees of gun depression, 10 degrees of elevation. So firing up over yourself, uh, you're going to be struggling on that. For instance, let's say you're on cliff, uh, they get on top of the hill, you're going to be quite a ways away to be able to hit the people on top of the hill. Now, along with that depression, this is probably one of the more dominant ridgeline fighters. However, your turret armor is not strong enough to handle it. 
Up next, turret armor, 152. Um, that is a lie. It's 175 in a lot of places. Majority 175. 51 millimeters of side armor. 38 millimeters of rear armor. Okay. Um, a little bit of a mix here. So we got 152 on the website. I am sorry, you guys. We got 152. Let's actually look at this. The website's lying today. So there's your 152. Let's jump up. There's 159. There's 175. Uh, 149. So yeah, they're literally going over the 152 on the exact frontal part of the... I'm sorry, this is dumb. And then they're saying 51 millimeters of side armor on the turret. That don't look like 51 to me. That looks like 50. And then if you jump over to Super Conk, we got 50.8 in some spots. So a little bit of mix here. Uh, frontal armor, 152. Lies, it's 175. Uh, side armor is 50, not 51. Lies, 38 rear armor. The rear armor is definitely not the thick. Um, we got 28 degrees of tra traverse speed. Horsepower, we got 640 engine power. Uh, power to weight ratio, 14.66. Top speed is 60. Reverse speed is 17. And 20% fire chance. So, the power to weight and top speed on this, if you guys want, sacrifice ventilation and go after a power terrain and you will be moving around the map really fast. Other than that, 0.16.66 is fantastic, especially with 60 top speed. And that 17 reverse speed means that you can pull around, put a few shots in, and back up without much of a problem in the way of you at all. Along with that, your track reverse speed, we're looking at 28 degrees. Um, for hard terrain, we got 1. For medium terrain, we have 1.1. For soft terrain, we have 1.9. Off-road driving would be... Uh, good benefit on this tank signal range 570 it's a bit on the low side but it's definitely okay uh jumping over to the armor viewer here sadly our side armor is not compared to pc but you got 50.8 50 50.8 which can ricochet 152 millimeter caliber guns and lower and since they left it at 50 which is the inside the uh armor viewer that i have in game uh, you're going to be getting overmatched by Dreadnoughts and ISC-152Ks. So do keep that in mind. If you see a Tier 7 Dread, uh, you cannot side scrape against them because it's only 50. I was a little bit disappointed because I have played this tank on PC, and you get used to something, and you know that you're able to pull out against 152s and ricochet them. For instance, being able to pull out against a 705A or a 60TP, ricochet a shell off your side, I am no longer able to do that. So that little bit of an armor difference is just not helpful. And if you guys can't tell, I'm sunburned and it hurts so much right now. Pain. But 175 in the turret, it does not matter the depression that you get with your 11 degrees or not. It is still going to be considered a weak spot. And this is why I said it's not overpowered and it's not underpowered. Because even though you have 11 degrees, you don't gain any armor for using that 11 degrees. Other than that, you guys, let's go ahead and jump into a match. We're going to be playing live today. And I'm going to be trying my best to not die. And then give you guys a rundown on how I feel about the tank. And go over the crew and equipment after we are done. So if you guys want to, go ahead and jump to the last little bit to see the crew and equipment on it. And my opinion of the tank. Other than that, let's go find a match and cause some trouble. All right, first matchups can be on Canis Encounter. This is not going to be too bad. We're up against tier nines. 53, 55, one artillery per team. This is going to be too bad. Now, just a heads up, I do take a balanced out um, ammunition load inside this tank, just because for me, um, the high explosive with 53 millimeters of pin, and not being able to, you know, swap. Unless, I do believe that the GSOR is capable of using the uh, advanced reload, so you can swap your shells freely as it's reloading, so you can actually choose what you want to fire. But the second you fire one, you can't swap after that, it'll start the reload. Now, for a lot of autoloaders, that advanced reload is extremely nice to have, so sacrificing ventilation for that instead of power terrain. Really, this tank and equipment-wise, you can sacrifice some things to get benefits in other categories. 36 second reload it's it's not gonna be too bad honestly i might start running the advanced reload and then run one clip of high explosive or maybe two clips of high explosive 
to do that and then kind of do a mix match. But your premium ammunition, sacrificing that, especially ending up inside higher tiers. And for anyone who doesn't know, there is a two for one whenever it comes to the matchmaking. So if you end up in two bad games, your third match is guaranteed to be um, a little bit in your favor. It doesn't mean that you're going to be guaranteed top tier. It just means that you're going to end up in a match where you're against nines. The matchmaking is not going to be as bad. And it, it just lines up a lot better. Other than that, I'm going to go ahead and start actually playing the game. And paying a little bit more attention to what's going on around me. Because I don't want to end up in one of those scenarios where... I'm just dead, because <laughs> those happen quite a bit. So here you go at the still console. Even without silent driving, I'm still able to move right here. So safety net at 246, and the WZ111-4 does have 400 base view range, and hopefully he's using optics. And right here, I kind of wish I had premiums loaded now. So first shell, let's actually do a tracking shot. There we go. Now we're going to put three into his lower plate, unless he's already used his repair kits. There we go. Lock him down and then put three into him. That is definitely devastating. That 11 degrees of gun depression really does allow you to do some really nice maneuvers. That is for sure. Um, Seeing how the team is pushing up right now, I think it'd be a good idea to join them. Maybe not. Our WZ just got knocked out. It's actually going to be a better play to back off. I do want to put some shells into that IS-6, though. Let's go ahead and back off left here. Strumpanza off to here. Top armor is also a little weird. On the right side, you got 38 millimeters, and the top center, and now on the right side, from this point of view, are only 25. So, 38 on the left side of the turret, on top, and then 25, 25. It is a little strange, actually, to see that. Because usually a lot of tanks, they have identical armor all across the board when it comes down to looking at the top. This one's a little weird. It, it is balancing purposes, though. Like, if they're aiming all the way down, you can overmatch the top armor. If you guys don't have enough penetration. If you have a 90mm or bigger, however. Black Prince. There we go. We're down to our last five rounds of standard. T28 prototype. 24 seconds until I'm loaded. So honestly, the 1,280 damage that this thing is capable of bursting out. Honestly, the the shots against the WZ are really good examples. If you're able to track your target and not worry about clipping out entirely in most auto loaders, and then coming in for a finish, it in my opinion, that's a better way to play your autoloaders. You use one shell to lock them down, two shells to lock them down if needed, if they use the repair kit or not, and then putting in your 800 or your 600 damage into them directly, depending on the amount of shells that you have. For instance, like the Nomad, I enjoy locking people down with two shells, guaranteeing that they can't repair, and then putting the rest of the shots into their armor directly to guarantee that damage without them being able to back up. Now, let's go ahead and start doing a little bit of a run around. T355, T28's pushing up. I'm definitely going to want to put some shells into that T28. There's one. There's two. There's three, and we pop the top. We have to swap into the premium rounds because we don't want to go through. Two standards. You don't want to load in two rounds. Especially seven versus five. They still have a chance to bring this back. But they are down in artillery. There's the tiger peel. Let's go ahead and knock this tree down and get a little bit of extra concealment right here. Maybe not. Let's actually go ahead and push up into the middle here. 
Borask. See, and this is the moment that would have been nice to have the uh, high explosive because of the Borask. But we are going to take the back side. Try our best to avoid getting caught out in the open. I don't know about you guys, but I have slowed down a lot on content creation, and I know. Um, personally, a lot of the things that they've been doing have been irritating me, and I've just slowed down. Artillery 2.0, with them going ahead and just outright... Ah, uh, he's going to reload before me. We're going to want to back off to our team. This was a bad play, because Borask is fast. We had to clip out against that uh, um, Hellcat, Super Hellcat. Alright, let's go ahead and pull up right here. That WZ is definitely nice and covered. Borask is definitely loaded, but I'm going to take a little bit of a risk right here and definitely outright push the WZ. Because if we can knock him down and make this a 6 versus 1, that'd be totally fine. 11 degrees of gun depression. We are going to put this to good use. Borask is up top behind us. Not going to start the reload. We're just going to go ahead and pull right up right here. More than likely, Borask is going to be heading around the uh, back side. So let's go ahead and mark the map for the team. Start doing a little bit of a push right here. I don't want to go down the right side by myself. Kind of wish the Type 4 would... Uh... Actually, let's do this. See if he wants to uh, cut right. No. Okay. I am driving like a muppet right now. Oh my goodness. Let's get on track. So, the rounds on this, the reload, everything else, you can get caught out whenever you're stuck on a reload. 36 seconds is a very long reload. Now, just in case, let's go ahead and pull up right here. He is not there. Check the back ridge. There's a chance that he might have snuck around the backside once everyone was pulling around the front. We're going to go ahead and start pushing along here. Along the zero line. Zero nine. The mobility, the traverse speed, you do feel it at that 28. With that traverse and turret traverse. It is a little bit on the slower side, but if you combine them, it's totally fine. And this thing is not meant to get in close. It's meant to be a sniper. We should actually go cap out. Because these matches, I don't like these matches taking too long. Especially whenever it's 5 to 1. Yeah, I'd rather go cap. Start my reload. This might be a mistake. Watch it. Start my reload, pull up, and he's going to be right there. That'd be hilarious. Then die. 360 alpha from a uh, Borask. It's 5 to 1. Our artillery is in the back. There he is. Okay.
You don't want to hold the shell. We're going to go ahead and just come up behind him. There is no escape. You will get possibly clipped out right here, hopefully. Beautiful. There we go. Good game. Five kills, 6,119 damage. And a profit of 124. Did not rely on the premium until I was out of standards. Mastery badge. <laughs> Demolition expert sniper. High caliber. Sharpshooter. Fighter. Duelist and fire for effect. Okay. 2,266 base XP. That was a good game. So, I'm going to go ahead and... Go back to Garage. I'm not going to play a second game inside this tank. I'm going to give you guys my opinion on this. Not every single game is going to end up like that. You're not going to pull out 6,000 damage inside of a tier 8. Um, but the tank is capable of a lot of burst potential if you're able to lock people down and get it out and then relocate quickly with that 60 top speed and 14.66 power to weight. So starting off, I'm using Optics, Ventilation, and Concealment Net. If you guys really want to, you can swap out ventilation for advanced reload. Uh, load eight rounds of high explosive. And whenever you do end up against those lightly armored targets, which you will occasionally, putting in that 420 alpha and then just you'll be devastating those poor little guys. So we're going to do 420 times 4. 1,680 potential output. That's going to be devastating to any lightly armored tier 10 or any lightly armored tier 8 or 9. It's pretty much any 9 or 8 that's lightly armored will be a complete knockout in 6 seconds if you do get those high explosives to penetrate. But it's nice to see that advanced reload is on this tank. It's on a lot of the new auto loaders. Um, sadly, however, it is not on the Swedish tier 10 Kronenwagen, which would have been amazing if they would actually add it to multiple tanks rather than just a 1. Because in PC, I'm used to intuition over anything else and that makes a massive difference and if this would load faster come on series x you're supposed to be quick but in all reality there the the game right now is in such a state that balance kind of doesn't seem like the ultimate go-to personally because it's just it's been rough you guys i'm not gonna deny it. it's been pretty rough so the commander that's on this uh tank today we're using track mechanic, born leader, rapid loading, steady aim, snapshot, situational awareness, sixth sense, camouflage expertise, and off-road driving. So, in my opinion, steady aim and snapshot have kind of become the only two perks I use for accuracy anymore. Run and gun, a lot of the time, I'm not using run and gun enough because they finally redid all the perks and fix them the way that they're supposed to be intended to be used. Run and guns really good for light tanks and light tank crews. But whenever it comes down to heavy tanks, medium tanks, tank destroyers, snapshot is really good to have on tanks that don't have, you know, that have turrets. For instance, if you're playing the T95, the E3, the Badger, um, no turret. Snapshot is not beneficial on those tanks. Steady aim is highly beneficial on the other hand. So, yeah. Personally, the G sword for me. I don't mind the tank. It's not a bad tank. It's not overpowered. If it's po poking over a ridge line, if you hit the turret flush on, you're going to be penetrating every single time. On the other hand, it is devastating. It does have got extremely good concealment, which can potentially make this tank extremely powerful. And with the crew setup and running optics on it, looking at three, 484 view range. So it, it can self-spot, stay concealed, but then bursting out, um, a really good example is going up against that uh, Super Hellcat. I got caught out, and then the Boras came up and also put two shells into me, lowering me down to potentially a one-shot if anyone else was alive inside that match on the 251 hit points. Personally, tank's not bad. It's a good tank. And if you guys want to see me live, uh, check out Twitch. As you guys can tell, today was not planned. This is kind of just something I need to start getting back into and start uploading more often because I know I've been a slacker the past uh, two months since they've been doing a ton of stuff and changing stuff and labeling something Artillery 2.0 and doing 3D audio. 
Um, speaking of which, 3D audio, sure, it sounds okay. But me, I go out, I spend a lot of money on my gaming equipment, on my recording equipment, on everything that I use. Currently, I'm wearing the SRH 1540s. You guys don't know what they are. They are made by Shure. And they are fantastic headphones. And they feel amazing. And probably some of the best audio quality I've ever heard. Along with that, I kind of stopped using mics on my headsets. And I rely on this now for everything that I do. So, you guys, have a great day, afternoon, night, whatever time it is for you. Um... I'm going to try and get back into a regular routine of uploading videos, maybe twice a week, maybe once a week. It just depends on what's in the game at the time. I'm not here to give you guys reviews that are based upon like, oh, it's the first time the tank's out. I want to actually get in and play the tank. So if you guys want to get instant reviews of tanks coming out, use other content creators. But if you want to know if the purchase is going to be good for you, I am all about making good spins and what to actually buy. On the other hand, the Arachi that was just released, the tier eight Japanese super heavy. I have a few things to say about that tank, but you guys can catch that next time. Other than that, it was nice having you guys here. I'm out of here. See you on the battlefield. And yeah, if you guys want to catch me live, jump over to Twitch. I've been streaming a lot more and kind of been jumping into that quite a bit. So, yeah, I'm out of here because I'm starting to embarrass myself and I don't need to turn red because I'm already cooked. So, yeah, I burned myself. It hurts.